Okay, so we'll begin. Um, I wish everyone a good evening and welcome to Tech Talks, hosted by Vision Loss Alliance of New Jersey. Tonight, from Talk Tech Tidbits, we have with us Dean Martineau. Before I introduce Dean, I would like to share with you his bio. Dean Martineau has been teaching adaptive technology to people who are blind since the days of the app to e and the Braille and Speak. Dean has created recorded tutorials, a computer magazine, and has written the Windows computer of uh, the Windows keyboard power user guide and get cracking with Chrome for Windows, to name a few of his books. Since 1999, he has been part of a team offering systems training to social security employees. In 2004, Dean created the publication Top Tech Tidbits for Thursday and has produced over 800 issues. Currently, Dean provides training in JSA, Windows, and iOS to individuals directly and through vocational rehab agencies. He is an obsessive collector of electronic books, which explains his familiarity with the content that he will present tonight. Tonight's Tech Talk, converting your Kindle books so they could be used on a variety of devices, such as voice stream reader, braille display, or the Victor stream. This can be done by using Codex, a program that removes the digital rights management protection from the document and allow them to convert them into a variety of file format. Learning to do will give you the flexibility for reading books and make navigating more accessible to you. So before we go on to this evening's presentation, I would just like to review with everyone our Tech Talk format. We ask that you hold your questions till the end of this presentation. And when you ask your questions, please use the raise your hand feature. For those of you who dialed in, the raise your hand feature is, the raise your hand feature is star nine. That will raise your hand. Star six will mute and unmute you, giving you the opportunity to ask your questions. If you are a computer, Alt Y to raise your hand. The mute and unmute command is Alt A. At the end of this presentation, we will open the floor to questions. If you're on an iPhone or an iPad, iPad, you're going to go up to the right, upper right, and you're going to click to more and click down to raise your phone. It's the phone, it's on the bottom. So, as I said, at the end of this presentation, we will open the floor to questions and Dean will let you know when he is ready for questions. So I would like to welcome Dean Martineau to Tech Talks. Welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like everyone to mute, to mute. There was a lot of, there was enough little distractions that went on that little words and syllables of, of that introduction didn't come through very well. So uh, please, everybody else, mute now for a little while. Uh, and if you don't know how to do that, I'm sure somebody can help you do it. Uh, I really appreciate the invitation to be here. I hope that what I tell you about turns out to be interesting to you. Um, we, uh, I'm happy to talk about top tech tidbits and the training I do and all this kind of stuff and whatever else. Um, we can do that as far as I'm concerned in the question answer section, uh, if, I, if that's what people want. For the time being, what I have done is to create a 27 minute demo of the, uh, of the using Codex to convert Kindle books, starting from how to install Codex and more especially how to install Kindle for PC and on through the, the pretty simple process of converting the books. I am not the audiophile that Jonathan Mosin, who was with us last month, is. I think that this recording is adequate. I think you'll hear it and make sense out of it. Uh, at least I certainly hope so, because it's the best one I have. So um, welcome to a couple of people who've come in since I started talking. I'm glad you're all here. 
And uh, so what I am going to do is share my screen, start this, this talk and play this recording, uh, unless I hear some, some convincing evidence that you're not hearing it. I think you are gonna hear it. Um, this will run, like I said, 27 minutes. And then after that, we can probably go pretty directly into questions and discussion. So give me a moment to uh, do, the, do the excitement here. I didn't want to do that actually. Yes, I did. Ah, I nailed it. Okay, I think you'll hear this in just a moment, anyway. Well, anybody there? Yeah, we're all still here. Dean is starting to share his screen, just, you know. This is Alan. Okay, we have a problem, just a moment. Okay. I don't know just, why we have a problem. Just, that's okay, just take your time. But we... Everybody just be patient. Dean is, is uh, working out the technical issues. Alan, if you can mute yourself. All right. Because I really thought that was going to work. So let me see what the deal is here. Well. Oh, wait a minute. Let's look at this. Okay, this... Uh, Okay, you ought to hear this in a minute. Uh, let's see if you do. And if you don't, I don't know what I'm gonna do because this is how I know to do this. Dean, it's buffering. Oh, okay. Well, let's hope it makes it. Did I hear something faint? Did you share the sound for the share? Screen sound share? Okay, I guess we're going to have to give up on the pre-recorded program because um, I don't know why I, I, I expect this kind of thing to work and it isn't working. So too bad. Um, we can actually probably make this recording available to people so that they can hear the demo, but we're not going to hear it together tonight. So. So let's talk about this then uh, live without the screen reader in the background and all that other good stuff. And that you really won't be missing that much by that experience. As I was saying in this, I started out by saying, I mean, I've, I've always wanted to read. I grew up in the 50s and 60s. I think I'm not the only one in this group who grew up in the 50s and 60s. Uh, there, weren't all, there weren't as many books as everybody else had. I always wanted them. I think it kind of left a scar because I still want more and more all the time. Can never have too many books, even though I'm probably not going to ever read maybe a fourth of them. But anyway, um, so uh, Kindle, of course, is one of the main sources for those books because so many books are available at such reasonable prices. There are a lot of ways to read Kindle books, and most of them are not affected by what we're going to talk about here tonight. You can, for example, read your Kindle books on your smartphone iPhone or Android. You can read them uh, using a Kindle Fire. You can read them using the, uh, the uh, Alexa devices. You can read Kindle books those ways. And you can still do all of those things without any problem with what I'm going to talk to you about. You can also, though, read your Kindle books on a computer. And that's where we have a difference because I don't really want to read my Kindle books tied to the computer personally. I know, in fact, when I started reading Kindle books, you couldn't do it, but uh, 
now you can. Uh, hang on a minute here. Let's see if we can get rid of screen sharing. Okay, I think we got rid of that. So um, now you can. You can read your Kindle books apparently quite effectively uh, on a computer if you want to. I don't. I like being able to have much more flexibility with regard to how I read books, where I read them, on what devices I read them. So this has, a, has been possible for a long time, but in 2015, a gent, I refer to him as a gent because he's a Britisher, named James Scholes, S-C-H-O-L-E-S, James Scholes created Codex. He put together a bunch of tools that were available in the public domain and into an accessible format with a, for the file converter and called it Codex, C-O-D-E-X. So why do I like this? What can I do? I can take my Kindle books, for example, and if I had a Victor Reader Stream, I could convert them into EPUB, which is a common electronic book format, put them in the Victor Reader Stream, and I'd have good navigation ability to buzz through my books by heading. I don't use the stream, but I use another portable device that is similar with the same capability. I can, one of my favorite things to do is to take those books and put them into the iPhone and put them into Voice Dream Reader, which is one of my favorite iPhone apps. And my other favorite thing to do with them is to put them on my portable Braille device. A lot of Braille devices, including the Orbits and the new Brailliance, and then and the Mantis have memory. You can put books in these things, in these devices, and read them wherever and whenever you want. And with using Codex, you have the ability to put your books onto your Braille device and read them. So that's why I like to do it this way. And there's a couple of hitches up front in this process. But after you get past those couple of hitches, it's really pretty easy. The, the, the rub is, you have to make a decision on that on any particular computer. You can either read your Kindle books using your computer or you can read them using Codex. You can't do it both ways on the same computer. You can't use a mod, the modern Kindle for PC app, which happens to be version 1.19. You can't use that with Codex. You have to use an older version. There isn't really any problem with that. Um, so how to find all the material that I'm going to talk about, and we'll figure out ways for you to get it, but it's really pretty easy. If you put into a Google or any other search engine, Codex, C-O-D-E-X, convert Kindle, it'll be one of the first two results, search results you're going to get, will take you to the page with Codex. And as far as uh, forget it. To get an older version, I'm using 1.14. Um, you can use newer ones. In fact, the newest 1.17 is what we're going to direct you to. Um, for that, you can go to the Codex page located at j j scholes j s c o l e s dot net slash using dash Kindle dash with dash or using dash codex dash with dash Kindle dash one dash one nine. So long URL, but it gets you there very easily. The main codex page is jscolis.net slash project slash codex. But again, there's lots of ways to get to this and we'll make sure you have easy access to the pages involved. So what you have to do if you've ever had Kindle for PC on your system is uninstall uh, I see we're losing people. I'm sorry that a few people aren't interested in this. Uh, you have to uninstall version uh, 1.19 and install version 1.17. The part of the trick is that happens at the beginning is in this installation process. They didn't make this very accessible. Luckily, thanks to James, we have easy path to find out how to do it. It's right there in his manual. I'm going to summarize what you do, but you can read it in his manual on his web page. When you uh, go to install Kindle, you have to register the device. You have to uh, link it to your Kindle account. You have to have a Kindle account in order to do anything with Kindle books. So you have to link this device to your Kindle account. And the problem is that process isn't very accessible, but if you just kind of follow the instructions blindly, it's very doable. You start out 
to get ready to register the device, you're, you're placed in a combo box that contains links to the, diff or the different Kindle pages for different countries. Uh, for most of us, we're going to be using Amazon.com because I think most of us are in the US. If you're not, you have Amazon.ca or Amazon.co.uk or others. Pick the one that corresponds to your country. So it's probably going to come up Amazon.com and hit tab and be prepared to hear nothing thanks to wonderful accessibility. This is the field for putting in your Kindle email address. You have to have one. Type it in and hit enter. More silence results. And what's happening in the background here is uh, the program is trying to log you in. It figures out that you haven't put in your password yet. And it's good enough to put you in the place to put your password. And uh, that's good. So do your best to accurately type in your Amazon password. Uh, do that, hit enter. You'll know that you've succeeded in this rather daunting little mini process when after a couple seconds, you hit the title bar command in your screen reader. That's the screen reader's modifier key followed by t along with T. So JAWS key plus T, uh, NVDA plus T or narrator plus T, they all tell you the title bar. And if the title bar says something corresponding to your system, then you've done it. You've got the thing installed. Um, and you've just about done everything you're going to have to do with Kindle for PC. So like my title bar reads Dean's Kindle for PC 7. So I've had a lot of different Kindle for PC apps over the years, so I'm up to number seven and I haven't ever gotten around to deleting these things from Amazon. So the other thing you have to do with Kindle for PC sometimes, rather sooner rather than later, open it up, go into tools, Alt T and then options, hit an O, and then press tab. The first option you come to asks, and it assumes that you want to have Kindle for PC update itself automatically for you when a new update comes out. You do not want it to do that. You want to stay snugly at version 1.17. You don't want to be sucked into version 1.19. So you want to uncheck that box as it'll be checked by default. Press tab and hit enter and you're out of there. You're done with everything you need to do with Kindle for PC except when you buy a book, which I will do in a minute here, kind of take you through what it's like to buy the book I bought on the recording that we can make available for you. Um, so Codex is a simple install. You just run the installer from the Codex page and you have everything you now need to convert Kindle books and have flexibility with them. So let's say you want to buy a book. That's what else is new. That's kind of what we're here for. So I, what I did in the demonstration, and I'll talk about this a little bit, these are for future use, might be something that uh, people might want to, uh, to do. Um, first off, if you're not using the ta Windows taskbar for your navigation, if you're alt tabbing around or doing things like that, I happen to know that on my system, Chrome is Windows 2. It's the second window pinned on the taskbar. So from wherever I am, I can always get to Chrome. I can start it or I can switch to it by hitting Windows 2. And I'm going to conduct a search of the Kindle site, kindle.com. But I'm not going to do it in quite the usual way because I want to talk to you about this briefly. This is another side issue. You can build custom search tools in Chrome and in also presumably Edge. I haven't learned Edge, but they operate the same way pretty much. So ordinarily, if I wanted to search for a book, I tend to search for books about the Baha'i faith because uh, that, well, that's one of my searches. I do others. But when I kind of prepared this, I, there was a book I wanted to buy that I knew came out of one of those searches. So I do a search. I could go to kindle.com and I could hit E for edit in my preferred screen reader browser combination because they all work this way. Um, and in, in browse mode off or forms mode on or uh, browse off in the case of narrator, I type in um, Baha'i, which is the term I want to search for. Then after I do that, I don't want to just search for the term Baha'i and have it bring up the default options. I want Kindle to show me the latest books. I wanted to sort the results by date added. So that's you know a number of keystrokes I have to do in my search. 
Well, let's do that all at once in my custom search instead. So I build a search, which you can learn how to do if ever you want to do that. I build a search, and this is not a technique limited to just books. I happen to use it for books, but you can do this kind of thing. All kinds of searches you might be in the habit of performing. Um, so I type in, a, I create this search. Then I go to the address bar in Chrome once that search is created and I've memorized its name. So control L is one way to get to the address bar. I hit control L and I type my custom search, which is BHK and I hit enter. Then all that stuff I was describing to you before happens. I go to Kindle, I do a search. The results are found and then they're sorted the way I want them to be. And I land right on my results page. So I've now got the page up that I, I know has the books I want. Um, and I'm going to typically use H for heading navigation in my screen reader to get down until I find a book I want to buy. And I happen to know that there is one in this case. And there is. Uh, it's a book about a lady that I met one time. So I find this. and. On this search results page, there's a little blurb about the book, uh, enough to know, well, how much is it going to cost and a few things about it. The significant piece of information here that I want to mention to you is there's a service called Kindle Unlimited. You can borrow up to 10 books at a time and have them around and read them and then return one, borrow another one. And what I'm describing to you with Codex also works with Kindle Unlimited. Now, I happen to believe that if I want to own a book, I should buy it. And that's what I'm, that's what I do here and what I would recommend that you do. But Kindle Unlimited is kind of neat for trying out books, looking at them, seeing if they're worth anything, and then maybe I'll buy it later or maybe I'll just get rid of it. But either way, I can use Codex to convert that book into a readable form. So I find a book I want to buy. I hit enter to open the page for that book. And if I want, since this is a Kindle Unlimited book, if I wanted to use Kindle to, to, to get it in Kindle Unlimited, I would just hit the uh, buy now with one click registered button and it would be added to my library. If I happened to have 10 books already in my Kindle Unlimited borrowing list, I would have to return one and then it would allow me to take this one. As it happens, though, I don't want to do that. I want to buy the book. And there's a link that says that, that you use using the list of links or whatever method you want. Your screen reader, all they all have lists of links. Um, and it starts with a W, want to buy for $9.95. That's the price. I hit enter. And that changes the page. Now, when I activate the buy with one click button, I buy the book. And I get the next page is thank you. Oh, yes, they should be thanking me. I just about own stock in the company. So um, we've done that. We've now bought a book. Now it's time to do a quick little move over into the Kindle for PC app because the book is bought, but the book isn't downloaded. I have to download the book onto my system so I can open Kindle for PC quickly. Kindle for PC, the books are sorted from newest to oldest. You can change that sort order if you ever need to. Sometimes you have to do that or want to do that to locate some old book that you don't remember when you got it or even necessarily the name, but you can sort them by title or sort them by author and you can browse through them that way. The process isn't effortless, but you can do it. Um, but in this case, I don't need to do any of that. I just open Kindle for PC and I tend to have to write arrow once, once the program opens and my book is right there that I, it tells me the name. I hit the context menu key. I down arrow a few times. I'm sure there's a shortcut key I could learn, probably D. I hit download. I get to download and I hit enter. I'm now done with Kindle for PC because I'm only downloading one book tonight. So I close it. And now we're ready for Codex. There's a little bit more to this program that I could talk to you about, but I tend to believe in telling you the easy way mostly. Just because there's multiple ways to do something doesn't mean there's any advantage in using those multiple ways. So I'm going to open Codex. As it happens, I don't have Codex on my taskbar because I don't use it quite that often, but I do have a quick key, Alt Control C to run it. There's lots of ways to do this kind of stuff. So I run Codex. And I land, I land in the file list, which is currently empty because I haven't added anything to the file list yet. 
I'm going to show you the easiest possible way to add things to the file list. I would go into tools, alt T for tools, down arrow to browse downloaded Kindle books and hit enter. This puts me in a list of all the Kindle books that I have from newest to oldest. And needless to say, uh, the, the book I just bought is the newest. I could just hit enter on that, which is what I will do in real life because I'm right now only interested in converting one book. Uh, otherwise, I could hit shift down arrow and select a bunch of books and then I could hit enter and they would all be added to the list of books to convert. I tab through, once I do this, I hit enter. I tab through the, the codex interface. You can always do this. There are some choices I never use, but they're there. I won't really talk about them. There, is, there are eight possible conversion formats that you can use. You can convert books, files to. Um, you can convert files to uh, Word, RTF, EPUB, uh, PDF. I've never used that. Uh, condensed HTML, never used that either, but maybe somebody will want to. My preferred two that I almost always use are text and EPUB. My default is text because I happen to be a big text file fan. If I don't do anything else with this book and I just tab to the convert button, it's going to be converted to text because that's the default format that I've chosen. So I do that, I tab to the convert button, I hit space or enter, and the book is converted. It goes into my ebooks folder. It's always, I really like teaching workshops like this because I learn things when I do this. Um, the, the convert, the ebooks folder by default your books are sorted into folders. Each, each folder cont is containing books by a given author. And then uh, in that, under that, in that folder is whatever books you have by that author. Or if the program couldn't detect an author, it puts them in the unknown folder. Um, I don't like that system too well, so I changed it when I've actually finally read the manual. So now all my books go into the uh, ebooks folder, just one after the other, and I have this nice folder of ebooks, but that's obviously a matter of individual choice. So once I've converted this book, I go look at my ebooks folder, which is under my documents folder. I find, because I have my books, my folders on my Windows computer sorted so that the newest folder, the newest files are at the bottom of every folder so that I can always tell, get to my latest folder real easily. So Presto, the last book in my folder, the bottom book, if I hit end when I open the folder, the, the book I will see is the one, the text file that I just downloaded. It's all ready for me to put it wherever I want it, read it however I want to. So this, as I say, is really a great flexibility feature. There's a couple other things that you can do with codecs should you want to. Um, it's, it is a really a handy file conversion utility. It intersperses itself into the Windows context menus unless you specifically forbid it from doing so. So you can find any old file anywhere on your system, hit the context menu or application key, hit X for convert, and you can either hit enter and that'll convert the book to your default format, or you can down arrow, and these aren't necessarily books, they can be any file, I just talk a lot about books, or you hit down arrow and you can choose any of the eight conversion file options and convert the file into that format. One kind of cool thing some of us might like, uh, Windows help files, CHM files, are files that uh, there's many programs have them. Uh, there's a there are all kinds of JFW, CHM, and various CHM files. It's the typical Windows help format. And you can, you can use codecs to convert CHM files into uh, more or less well-constructed documents uh, with all of that information in one document for reading on some other device. So I'm sorry that the uh, demonstration didn't work, but as I say, we can, uh, we can make it available to you. And I know we lost about five people, but I guess that's kind of to be expected. I hope maybe they uh, watch the program on Facebook or ask questions some other time if they're interested. Um, I just love it. I, I love being able to take my books and read them wherever I want and 
have I, you know just total freedom of that of that way in that format. So at this point, um, why don't we start having conversations? If I haven't silenced everybody with all my rambling um, about anything and everything you want to talk about, uh, and I'll try to answer questions to the best of my ability. Okay, so we do have a few hands raised. Uh, we will take Suzanne. Hi, Dean. Um, thank you very much. It was a, a, a good um, good talk. Um, my question is, it, when you have the Kindle and you have to have it on the PC first, I use Voice Dream Reader. Um, so I have to have it on the PC first, then download it to the codex and then put it on the Voice Dream Reader. Is that... Right. So if you buy, you buy, let's say you buy a book uh, one day on, on Kindle and you, it's, you use your newly installed version 1.17, which lets you buy, uh, convert Kindle books using Codex. Actually, I'll, I can say a little word about modern developments, but that still works for almost everything I buy. So then you convert the book. You have to you you, uh, you go through the process I talked about, where you you buy it, you download it, and then you convert it. Uh, what I do with Voice Dream Reader, it isn't the only way to do it, but what I do is to put the book into Dropbox, and then I drop Voice Dream Reader is set up to grab books out of Dropbox or files out of mm -hmm. Dropbox, and then I go and I open Voice Dream Reader and I add, and I click Dropbox, and I have them actually going into a separate folder in there and I find that folder and I find the book and then Voice Dream Reader has it right next to every file it comes across that it's able to work with. It has a download choice. So you just hit enter on download and the book will be added into your Voice Dream Reader library. So it's okay, several so you have to put it in Dropbox first? Well, that's how I in, do it. Because uh, there are other ways. Um, you have to get the book somehow from your computer into Voice Dream Reader. Some people use OneDrive. That's a trick that would be nice, but I've never figured out how to do it. I guess I haven't tried hard enough to figure out how to do it. Um, and if there are other ways, maybe somebody else can, can share them. But that's, you know, PCs, I think if you had a Mac, this would be a little bit easier process perhaps. But with the PC, there is a, a a little bit of a process to get the books into Voice Dream Reader. That kind of thing mm -hmm. doesn't phase me much, but it is a, it is an extra step. Okay, thank you. Our next question, the next person up is Matthew. Yeah, Matthew. You unmute yourself, there you go. Yeah, thank God. No, the Kodak, did that spell like, like the film company? Nope, it's Codex. Codex, C O D E X. Thank you. And the Kindle can 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 that be used with the audiobooks the same way? Well, you can. The audiobooks that you can get through Amazon are from Audible, and you don't need any of this stuff for Audible. You simply need an Audible app on your iPhone or on any Kindle any Kindle device. Um, so those are that's where audiobooks come from from Amazon. The books that we're talking about are in are in print. They're actually in text. So. Hi. Those don't work. They're not read by human beings. You would read them with a speech synthesizer, no matter how you Thank read you. them. So. And there's even the Kindle app. I just downloaded my, I've got my, my on, the, on the iPhone watch too. There's a couple of book apps. Oh yeah, you can use, yeah. I, mean, I don't know the iWatch, Apple Watch very well, but you can use, I'm sure there is, you can read your, but again, and when you read the Kindle books that way, you're, they're read by the synthesizer and you could, you could use the same process that I'm that I described here to take Kindle books and put them on your Apple Watch, probably. Okay, thank you so much, and that was a great presentation. Oh, well, thank you. Um, next up would be Christina. Hi, Dean. It was wonderful. I learned a lot. I have I have a few questions. Ah. Um, with the Codex, do you have to search it with Codex for Kindle, or because I just did a search when when you were doing the presentation, and all these different Codex Unlimited all all came up. Hmm. Well, when I do, I've done it, I just simply put the words Codex Convert Kindle, um, okay. and that that tended to work for me. I haven't tried it for a few weeks. Um, 
And if you just if you read the the, the header line of the result, it should be fairly obvious um, which one. Um, as I say, you could also just go to the URL of uh, scolas dot net j scolas dot net slash project slash codex c o d e x. Make sure you're spelling codex right. But uh, various ways of doing this. Also, the um, Kindle Unlimited. Now, word do you, is that? Can you just put in KindleUnlimited.com to get to that, or do you get it from Amazon? Or uh, you get it from Amazon. I don't entirely uh, remember how I did this. I don't entirely know why I, I why I keep it. You know, sometimes we do things that we're not very brilliant about financial management. It's it's I use it every once in a while, and it's uh, so it's 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 an Amazon feature. I'm sure that if you Go on to Amazon.com and search for Kindle Unlimited. You'll get more information than you. Yeah, because I never, um, I never knew that. Yeah. And when I, you're talking about your custom search, is that considered? Is that making like a macro to make your custom search that you do? Well, it's not called that. No, um, in Chrome, and I suspect, I think, from what I, to the extent that I've looked at it in Edge, when you're going through the settings, uh, you have search. You have options for search tool, search engine. There's a default search engine, and then there are other search engines that the program already knows about. Uh, so, like in the if let's let's say Google is your default. Well, mm -hmm. the program already knows about DuckDuckGo, and it knows about Yahoo, and it knows about actually it knows about lots of other sites where you have conducted searches. But then you go through, and you can add a search engine. And it takes you through a little three screen dialogue where you name it, you give the URL. So, so then what you would actually do at that point is you would go through and, and go to Kindle, uh, type a search, put in a search string, like in my case, it was Baha'i, but whatever. And this is only in the Kindle example, the same technique works everywhere. Um, and you do a search. I've noticed when I was looking at this the other day, you used to be able to, when you were doing your initial search, you could change the sort order, but now it at least seems like this week, you can't do that oh. until you get to the results page, then you change the sort order. So oh. I would go to the results page, you know, do the search, go to the result page, change the sort order using that combo box. Once that search comes up, once the results come up for that, grab the URL, go to the address bar and copy, yeah, it, copy it. And then you put that URL into the custom search URL field oh. and uh, give it a name and, uh, and you've got it. Okay, thank you. Okay, I have a few more questions here, Dean. So bear okay. with us. Oh, yeah. um, okay. Someone who called in with the last four digits of 3511, Seven, your turn to ask a question. This is Mary Beth, and I, you have made me so happy tonight because I was a huge Codex user, and all of a sudden I just hit a rock, and I could not use it anymore. It just wasn't working, I and I hadn't updated or done anything, and, and I think I know what to do now. I did have one question. Do you know if James is 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 planning to update? Um, Codex at all? I haven't seen any evidence that he is. So what's happening here, and I haven't followed this too closely, but I, I was looking the other day in preparation for this program and I did see that there's that, so underneath the hood in Codex is this thing called Calibre, C-A-L-I-B-R-E. All kinds oh, of right. people want to convert Kindle books. It's not only blind people who want to do this. And so for, all the, for a lot of the same reasons, we want to do it. So uh, Caliber is what I used to use. It's not very easy to use. I always kind of held my breath when I was doing it, and it uh, eventually it would work. And then when he came out with Codex in 2015, it was like, well, forget this. I'm not doing that anymore. Well, sure. Caliber is still being developed. There are Kindle is still coming out with new formats. Um, so at some point in some time, it is possible the Codex won't work with significant number of books. For right now, for me, it does. I did buy a book one time where it didn't. I could have expected, in fact, I kind of half did expect it. This was a picture book on race, racial justice that somebody recommended, uh, and I thought this looks interesting. Well, it was a picture book. 
couldn't, didn't get a bit of text, couldn't read it on the phone, couldn't read it with codecs having converted it. So I called uh, Kindle disability support, Amazon disability support, and they uh, removed the book from my library and gave me a refund. Um, but I don't know if this new, if, uh, if Caliber 2020 uh, would have converted that or not. But that's a development we may have to be paying attention to. But uh, I don't see evidence that he's updating. But, you know, maybe he, like me, he may not, the books he's buying may not matter to him or he may have moved on to other things. I don't know. It wouldn't be that hard to find out. I haven't written to him to ask. But he does. Uh, actually, I did. And he did not respond, which was a surprise because he had been very responsive. And so yeah, I just wanted well, to do anything doing other things with life or who knows, but, but uh, uh, yeah, that's, that'll be too bad. I will certainly miss this when that capability goes away. That's all I can say. Well, I'm just so glad to know that it's still here because it was just not working for me. And I, I really know, appreciate won't. this so much. So you Thank know, you. You, you know what to do. And if you have questions, I'm sure we can, you know, we can help you out. But yeah, that's uh, uh, just get 1.17 of Kindle on there and okay. tell it not to update itself. And then you should be okay. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you, Mary Beth. Next up, we have Lori. Uh, hi, Dean. Hi there. Thank you for all your information. You mentioned that Codex could be used for other files if you integrate it into your system. So you're saying when you do Shift F10 on a file and the context menu comes up, you're saying there's some kind of X. Yeah, choice. It's added. It becomes part of the context menu. So shift F10 or more commonly nowadays, the context menu or application key, depending on what screen reader you use, how they refer to it, um, will will bring up a menu. You know, you, you've arrow to a file. And when you're pointed at that file, hit, hit shift F10 or the context menu key. Then in that menu, once codex is installed and once you've used it once, you hit X and it takes you to a convert choice. And you can, if you hit enter, it'll convert that file. If it's a PDF or I don't recommend it for PDF conversion. It isn't very good, I don't think. But, um, you know, Word, any pretty much all kinds of formats. And then it'll convert it into whatever format is your default. Or if you down arrow from that convert choice, you can hit enter. You can arrow through the list of conversion choices and hit enter and it'll convert it to whatever you chose. So yeah, you can you can do a, I didn't mention what something that I tend to do, I'm not sure if it's any advantage or if it's just me being geeky. Um, I download Bookshare books. Often I'll download them as EPUBs, you can do that. Um, if I wanted it, for example, so I can convert that book into a text document if I want to or something. Uh, if, I wanna, if I want to take that EPUB and create a BRF file, which is the only thing you can, it's the only way to read Braille, say on a basic orbit reader. Um, I can run it, take that EPUB that I downloaded through Bookshare and run it through uh, uh, send APH, send to Braille. And I've got a perfectly viable uh, BRF. In fact, I like it better than the ones Bookshare produces because it doesn't have all the print page indicators in there. But uh, that doesn't have, it's kind of neither here nor there. It's just something I forgot to mention. But yeah, it's, uh, Codex incorporates itself into the context menus and gives you a lot more flexibility with all kinds of documents. And that was going to be my follow-up question was, could you give other examples outside of Kindle book conversions that you would think would be good for people? Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, maybe you want to take a, I don't, you take a Word document, convert it to text. Uh, you can convert PDFs to text. I don't like the, uh, the way I don't like the, the way it handles line breaks in you know, when it does that, but you can do it um, or convert P it might work better to convert a PDF to word. Uh, some of these things I haven't tried, but they might work. Uh, so it's, it's something to, something to think about. Thank you. Thanks, Lori. Can you do uh, iBooks? Uh, I, didn't, couldn't, I think the question was out of turn, but also I couldn't hear it. Thank yeah. you. What? Yeah, we were. Uh, the next one is Suzanne. Next question for, from Suzanne. Hi, I just wanted to follow up with the Kindle Unlimited. Um, because I'm a member of Audible, I got Kindle Unlimited free. Um, 
I don't know whether you have to pay if you just have Kindle and not Audible, but because I, you know, get my credits um, every month um, and I'm a member um, of Audible, I, I'm able to get Kindle Unlimited also, which is kind of nice. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I don't, you know, I don't honestly understand why I have it. I don't know if it's a pri I don't think it's necessarily a prime benefit, but um, I haven't taken any action to, I, I, I've never, to my knowledge, and I kind of watch my bills, although not as closely as I should, I've never paid for it, to, to my knowledge. They've never told me, okay, your Kindle Unlimited's expiring. Just keep in mind, it's going to come up now. Um, yeah. So I don't know why I have it. I don't. I had I had Audible at one time. Uh, I canceled Audible, but uh, so whoever had that question, I hope you will get into the queue and ask it. I couldn't hear it all the way, and, and he was out. You were ahead of somebody else in the queue. And now, thank you, thank you, Suzanne. Our uh, next question, and that was the question, Christina. And it was me, and I was asking, can you do iBooks? You know, I ignore iBooks uh, because <laughs> uh, I don't feel like reading books on my iPhone either, really, necessarily. I like being having more flexibility. I'm, there's always the big discussion of, oh, should we have quote-unquote note takers? And, and I don't find, for, as, as, a, as a reader, somebody who likes to load large books and search them and browse them and stuff. I don't find the iPhone to be terribly acceptable for that. You can read books on the iPhone from start to beginning, but uh, start to end, that's good, start to end. But I I don't, I don't know, I, I just have, I ignore the entire iBooks system because I figure anything I want, I can probably get on Kindle. Uh, or there's some other nifty things. There's one called Z-Library that you can use. Uh, it's a big, massive, I'm sure the Publishers don't like it. Uh, repository of free eBooks. Uh, so I, I, um, I don't, I don't deal with iBooks at all. Uh, I know some people use it a lot, and I don't. And then with the conversion part of it, so you can do Dropbox and OneDrive. But is there any other ways to move it over the books to like a Voice Dream Reader or to the Victor Stream? Well, Victor Stream doesn't require anything. Victor Stream is uh, you just plug the plug it in, plug, plug its cable into your USB port, or, oh, okay. and, and it'll just you just copy. That's that's the problem with the iPhone is its file management system. And I don't know honestly. Maybe it's better. I haven't kept up in every aspect of iPhone living. I mean, there is a file manager in there. There is also there is a paid app which I'm not familiar with. I tried it once and didn't meet with much success. Some people on some of the lists are really raving about it though, called Walter 2. It lets you put, and I don't know how they get away with it, but they do. I don't know how much it costs either, but it, uh, you can copy anything from your computer to your iPhone. You can copy music. You can oh, wow. copy a book directly into Voice Dream from the computer uh, with it. Uh, and apparently, it's pretty accessible. You know, there, there's some they're they're working on it, and apparently, it's come. They're coming out with Walter Pro now. I don't know. I haven't pursued this matter in in great depth because I haven't needed to, but. Uh, of course, there's always iTunes, which is a sort of a usable system uh, if you have to use it uh, to get. That's another way to transfer files, of course. And it may be that there are other ways. That those are the ways I know. Is Walter just the, the um, name it's Walter? W A L T R. Spell it again. W A L T R. O T R. And then did yeah. you say two? It's Walter 2, but I think they're coming out with Walter Pro. I don't know. Uh, one of the, I kind of lurk on a couple of these iPhone lists. I think it's um, VI phone, I think, is where the discussion on that has been lately. But I haven't, uh, as I say, I haven't looked into it too far. That's interesting. Thank you. Do we have any other questions for Dean? 
If there are no other questions on Codex um, and the converting of books, Dean, uh, would you like to talk about a uh, topic? How many are there? Oops, no question. Did I hear another question? Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, Dean, would you like to tell the group about Top Tech Tidbits? Well, I suspect most people know about it, but if you don't, uh, you probably should, just because it's so sort of handy. Um, in like 2003, some of you might know Amy Rule from Massachusetts. She, uh, she did a subscription service called Amy's Finds and Forwards, um, something along those lines. And she would send out email messages of information, uh, some, some messages from email lists, some various things. But it was a it was a good source for technology news, a little bit more than I wanted, but it was a good source for technology news, uh, follows and forwards, I think she called it. But then she stopped doing that. And I thought, this is really sad because that was handy. Um, and so on reflection, and with some trepidation, I decided to create this publication. So I sort of decided, well, nothing much goes on in the world on Thursdays. So uh, I... Uh, came up with top tech tidbits for Thursday. I sent it out myself for a few years. The number of subscribers grew. Um, once it got into around the 3000 area in 2008, I was about ready to cancel it because, you know, is it our or ordinary run of the mill email systems aren't made for this. Um, Larry Lewis, who used to have a business called Flying Blind uh, LLC, took it over, became his business property. I was pretty much, except for when I got a little too outspoken, uh, I could pretty much put anything in there that I wanted. And uh, he actually even started paying me eventually a little bit. Um, Larry ran that for quite a while. Then he ran it even after he stopped doing his business for a couple of years. But there came a point when that needed to end. So now the people that, that his, his, uh, the company that handles his email uh, now handles, is, it now belongs to them. And they've really kind of revved it up a little bit. They've created, if you if you notice, they've created all kinds of directories and have a lot of information in every, in every issue. So uh, uh, it's available by email for free. Uh, we have about 6,000 subscribers. I think people still like it because even after 15 years of, of it, you know, the world hasn't changed that much. So people like the fact that they get a one stop, pretty quick list of a little blurb. There's more in there than, than what I put nowadays, but even, but anyway, that you get a headline, a header. So you can use probably most browsers and most screen reader combinations. If you don't like that one, just hit H and skip to the next one. And then you have a one or two or maybe three sentences at the outside of information and then a link. If you care about it, you follow the link. If you don't, you don't. And it, it's, it's the way of keeping up with new things that are going on, whether they be podcasts, email lists, webinars, uh, new programs, new devices, uh, kind of slanted toward the blind, things that, you know, I happen to be part of this population. I kind of know what we're interested in. Not universally, obviously, but I have a pretty sense of, uh, of the kind of stuff people want to know about. And you have to limit it some. So there's all kinds of other sources of all kinds of other information, but this is limited to mostly people with vision loss. And if you don't get it already and want to, you can go to Top Tech Tidbits. That's all run together. Top T O P T E C H T I D B I T S dot com. And there's a subscription. The first edit field on there lets you put in your email address and you subscribe. If you have a problem subscribing, we can probably help you. Unless you at some point unsubscribe yourself, then we can't help you by law to do it. But those guys handle all the email and they make sure that um, different you know, ISPs that are blocking different, different other ISPs, they work their way through all that kind of stuff because it's their business to do that sort of thing. And I don't have to worry about that. All I do is put out the issue every week. Thank you. Suzanne, you do have a question. Suzanne, you have to- Yeah, you? Um, about the, the email, um, and I talked to you a little bit, Dean, before, um, 
for some reason I stopped getting it and I've been a member since 2013 and I you directed me to someone else and they right. talked to me and they said I should be getting it um, and I'm not I looked in my spam folder it's not there I put your um, the address in uh, my contacts in case that was a problem I'm still not getting it and I don't know I love it and would love to get it back <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but I, I, you're you're a little far um, from uh, who's doing the emails, I guess. Well, so Aaron, um, I love getting old and senile and forgetting names. Um, <laughs> their company uh, handles all that. I mean, and and he's. I know. I saw the message he sent you, and he tells you, you know, what to add where. Uh, if yeah. you have questions about that, maybe you know he could probably elaborate on it a little bit. Um, they can't do anything; I mean, they're already sending it to you. Um, I mean, you could create a new email account and get it in that ac account. Uh, you can get it on the web every week. Uh, but I mean, they are—they are sending it. Um, yeah, I just don't know why Gmail's not giving it to me. <laughs> yeah, Gmail it usually isn't that bad. Um, I mean, it's one of the better ones as far as I'm concerned from my limited experience. Um, you might tell them, uh, MindVault, there we go, finally got it, it only took me a minute or two, MindVault systems, um, tell them that, yeah, that you know, you, you're using Gmail and that they're not, uh, but that's strange because, I mean, I, I also use Gmail and I get it every week. Uh, yeah. It doesn't know that I write it. Uh, it comes from the same same address, so I don't know um, what to really yeah, say. Yeah, it stopped about. coming in February, and um, you know, because I went back and I searched, and it stopped in February. Mm. And um, I did re um, subscribe. resubscribe um, with help. the same email, yeah. but I still didn't get anything. So. Maybe I do have another email that I could maybe try that. Yeah, and um, I don't know. Yeah, I tell mention to them that you know since Febru the February is they are they aware of any event that happened? So now depends on a lot of things. Do you do you just get you get email on your computer or on your phone or both? I get it on my iPad and my um, computer. Okay. Have you looked in uh, spam or junk on all devices? Yes. Okay, because I have this weird system where uh, my spy junk, if something goes into junk, uh, it's on my phone and I look in there and I find it and then I can go into that. I can send it to my inbox, which tends to tell it to be not junk anymore. Uh, right. So I don't know. Uh, that's a tricky one. Then there should be a solution. Uh, have mm. you also, have you gone on to the Gmail web interface and dug around in there. Yeah, I did that too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's weird. I don't know. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah I, I tried everything. Yeah, it sounds like it. Well, at this point, I have my girlfriend sending me, a, forwarding it to me at this point. So. Right, well, that, that kind of trick works too. Um, but, yeah. so. Thank you, Dean. Thank you. Do we have any other questions for Dean? Um, Mary Beth. Hi, just a quick additional question. You mentioned that uh, it might be possible to get um, a copy of the recorded demo that you weren't able to play. If we want one, what should we do? I can, this is Linda. So um, okay. if you want to go onto the VLANJ, Tech Talks Facebook page and become a member, all of our Tech Talk recordings are put on that Facebook page. Okay, I mean the one that couldn't be played tonight. Right. I'm sure that I can, we'll, we'll talk about how I get it to Linda and they can post that on the Facebook page. Okay. Short okay, of that, I mean, I could always put it in Dropbox and give it to you, but if they want it, post it for all to hear. Uh, they can do that and you can grab it from there. We could post both. Well, that was that. Okay, we could post both, Dean. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Another question, Stacy. 
Stacy. Um, yes. The library thing that you were talking about was called Z what again? Z hyphen library. Okay. Z hyphen. Okay. I've never heard of it before. I hadn't either until fairly recently. And I was, it's got a lot of stuff. Uh, I was kind of surprised. And they're all, they're all, they all seem to be EPUBs. And uh, you can download five a day. And then if you try to download more than that, they want you to create a free account, allowing you to download 10 a day. And then eventually they want you to pay if you really want to go beyond that, which most of us don't need to. So, um, uh, no, my limit would be like maybe four, maybe three. Right. You know, well, depending on what it, depending on what it is. Yeah, they, they've got a pretty sizable collection there, but uh, Z dash, I think it was Z dash library. I'm pretty sure it's dot com. Uh, I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Okay. Thanks, Stacy. We have another question from Rhonda. Hello. Hi there. I just wanted to thank Dean um, for his newsletter. It actually was my, um, how you get up in the morning on Thursday and, and read your newspaper with your coffee. So I look forward to early in the morning on Thursday. And that's how I know my work week was coming closer to the end. And the information <laughs> is very valuable. So uh, thank you, Dean, and keep up the great work. Well, thank you. They, they're... Uh... MindVault Systems is really doing a good job with it. I mean, they're making it a really more comprehensive research than I ever did, resource than I ever did before. So but to put me with them, and I think you've really got a lot of information now. Uh, some stuff that I wouldn't personally include, but they are. And, well, that's great. People can skip it if they don't want it. Uh, and, yeah, it's, it's a, my favorite story came out of, I think, a, I think it was NFB last year. I was attending something and some some person during the pandemic uh, maybe that was you Rhonda but I don't think so some person during the pandemic would intentionally get up at four o'clock so they could catch tidbits as soon as it came out because it comes out at four in the morning eastern time and uh, I thought that was that was kind of cool any other questions for Dean Dean, is there anything else that you'd like to share with the group? Um, no, like I say, I do do training, which if, if an agency is paying, I'm happy to pay to, to charge rates that are befitting the agency rates. And if individuals are paying, I charge much more reasonable rates for some sort of, I, I'm kind of specializing a little bit in like JSA, which is a, pro, a, a program that you use for dictating and working, managing the computer with Dragon. Um, and also Windows and also iOS. But we figure out if I think I can work with you and vice versa. And if we do, we, we go from there. And it's uh, so I do that. And uh, if anybody is interested in such things. Uh, yeah, that's good to know. So. Dean, um, I'm going to give your email to a friend of mine. He's blind, but he's also um, a paraplegic. Mm -hmm. And he also cannot use his right arm. So um, that dictation that you were talking about may be good for him. So I'm going to give him your e email address. It might be. And I am really, uh, I'm also really excited about uh, the uh, voice control that Jonathan talked about last mm -hmm. time. Unfortunately, I'm finding on my perfectly good uh, SE2020 phone, that I can't use it very well. It doesn't work the way it does on Jonathan's spiffy 12 Pro. And they didn't really say anything about that in Apple accessibility. So I think that I, my, my suspicion is you need to have all the RAM that that, uh, that, that uh, 12 Pro has uh, to do something like that. But boy, with that combination uh, for some people, it may be better even than, uh, than the computer with dictation. It's really, I was very impressed with what, what can be done with that. So yeah, those are, that's the kind of stuff I'm kind of specializing in a little because we have all kinds of blind people doing all kinds of computer training and I can do it as well as, maybe not as well, maybe better, but you know, there's a lot of people doing it. Um, but some of that stuff, not as many people are doing, so. 
I was going to say you. thank you again to everyone. I have another meeting to go to. Have a good night. Thank you again. Thank you. Glad you came. Any other questions for Dean? Well, thank you all very much. I see we're still over 20 people. People were kind of dropping like flies during the presentation, but I don't know if that's typical, but it was kind of a specific. Yeah, Everybody's at a different level, you know, and everybody's looking for something different. So, right. It was a very, it's kind of a specific subject. Yeah. It was, it was very informative. So, um, with that, I will close out our evening. Dean, I really want to thank you for your time and your presentation. It was really filled with a lot of great information. And everyone just remember that on the VLANJ Tech Talk Facebook page, that there will be a recording of this. And then any information, uh, Dean, if you'd like me to post on that page, Elsa will be happy to do that. Um, and in closing, I just want to let everyone know, thank you for always attending Tech Talks. And if you would like to know more about programs or have any questions, you could call 973-627-0055, extension 1312. And everyone, good night and stay well. And Dean, thank, thank you for thank being you so much, Dean. It was wonderful. Thank you. Well, thank you very much thank, for attending. Thank you, and I'm glad thank you found you. it beneficial. Take care. Thank you so much. Have a good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Good night, everyone. Good.